open and then we'll take it from there. Uh, uh, let's invite our next guest. We have Girish Pai now joining us from uh, uh, Nirmal Bank. Girish, hi, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, season's greetings to you and your team. Uh, uh, let's discuss some Diwali ideas that you have. Uh, Britannia. Uh, of course, uh, you know, it's a stock for all seasons, but uh, uh, at this price, you think risk reward is still in favor? Yeah, so if you look at the consumer basket, the valuations are very rich across the board. Uh, so I think uh, within that, in a relative basis, I would probably think that Britannia is a value bet. Uh, so two, two, two things have actually played out uh, against the company in recent times. One has been volume growth has been fairly tepid. Uh, so the last quarter, that is Q1, FI20, volume growth was just about 3% YY. Uh, this quarter, we're actually not expecting anything great. We're expecting 2% growth. Uh, I think the other issue has been about uh, corporate governance, the fact that they've given out intercorporate deposits to the Wadia Group. Uh, but last quarter, the number actually came down, and our interaction with the management indicates that that number is headed lower. Uh, but if you look from a medium-term perspective, we think that uh, packaged food space is a secular growth story. Within that, biscuits is a fairly large uh, area. And within biscuits, it's a leader, and it's been uh, growing faster than the market for a fair bit of time now because of the innovation that's been doing. So we think that after a hiatus, we think that growth is going to kind of come back. Uh, and some of these concerns on corporate governance are going to go away. And uh, we think that multiples can expand even from where they are right now. So uh, we are expecting uh, uh, you know, the stock to go up to all, as much as uh, 3,600 over the next 12 months. So there's a fair bit of upside of almost like 20% from here. Okay. Well, uh, uh, if Aldirams were listed, I guess, uh, ahead of Diwali, that would be the best buy. But, uh, uh, you know, let's come to uh, Blue Star. You have that on your list. Now, uh, we had spoken to Tyagarajan some time back and he did say that he's expecting sales to improve. But they, these consumer durables have been struggling. Why are you going for Blue Star? Uh, so, I think it's, uh, don't look at the very near term picture. I think you should look at from a slightly medium term, uh, uh, you know, slightly medium term view. See, I think this is a company which has moved from a B2B uh, focus to a B2C focus. Mm. So from almost like seven, eight years, uh, when it had a 0% market share in AC, it's come up to as much as 2.5% market share. Okay. Uh, so uh, the company has been investing in innovation. So you'd be very surprised to know that it spends about 50 crores in R&D, whereas a player like Voltas just spends about 5 crores in R&D. So uh, they've been spending a lot of money on, on internal innovation. So they're coming up with all sorts of new products which have innovative uh, you know, uh, capacities and so on. So uh, we believe that this is a company which can grow slightly faster than the market, uh, while uh, Voltas is at somewhere close to 24% market share. Uh, this company is closer to 12 and a half. We think it can grow ahead of the market in, in the AC pack. Uh, the commercial refrigeration piece is a unique piece to the company and uh, the EMPS part uh, also has an element of commercial refrigeration which gives you better margins. There is a water uh, purifier related business which is actually uh, a, a loss making business right now but it can go into the profits in the next couple of years. So it can drive up margins for the company by almost like 150-200 basis points which, can, which means that you will probably see uh, high teens, low twenties kind of earnings growth for the company. So it's a medium term bet, I think a 12 month bet uh, so to speak. High quality companies have been giving dividends for almost like 50 years, every year for 50 years now. Okay, and I mean, of course, the space has been buzzing as well, right? I mean, this is a stock that is at a new high, a 52 week high. Girish, uh, happy Diwali to you. The other stock you're looking at is City Union Bank, one of the few banks that has managed to maintain a strong asset quality and has delivered returns to investors over the last two years. Um, what's the rationale henceforth? So this is an evergreen stock. So if you look at uh, this company across uh, credit cycles, even at the bottom of the credit cycle, if you had look, looked at the numbers, uh, you know, the previous uh, credit cycle, you would have seen that the ROAs have always been about one and a half percent. So this is a company which has been able to weather cycles fairly well. Uh, and we think that uh, it's got a very good franchise within Tamil Nadu uh, in the SME space. Uh, it's kind of benefiting from a couple of things. One is that uh, the PSU Bank, which has been focused on Tamil Nadu, Indian Overseas Bank, I think that's not been doing very well. Some of the private sector uh, banks out there like Lakshmi Vilas Bank, Karur Vaisya Bank, Tamil Nadu Mercantile Bank, these are all going through very serious asset quality issues. So I think it's kind of gaining market share. So we would think that this is a company which can deliver a 15% kind of a, uh, asset growth with very good margins of about 4.1, 4.2% NIM. Uh, ROAs of upwards of 1.5%, I think probably closer to 1.7, 1.8%. The stock is not cheap, uh, so we're not advising from a trading perspective. This is a buy and hold kind of a stock. It's a compounding story, so to speak. 
Okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, Girish, uh, hold on to that thought. We have a very important uh, corporate honchu joining us. Uh, Last in Tubro's Essence Subramaniam is with us. Uh, good morning, Mr. Subramaniam. Uh, greetings uh, of the season. May you have a very happy Diwali and uh, everyone at LNT and your family. Uh, but uh, you, you have ushered in a bit of uh, positive cheer in the markets with uh, uh, an order book that's grown 20%, maintaining your guidance. But you know, in your uh, conversation, you all gave an impression that the economy is sluggish. How do we reconcile the two? You're doing well, but uh, the economy is not in a fine spot. Mm, good morning, Lata. <laughs> uh, happy Diwali to all of you in the studio, Sonia Nanoj, as well as uh, all of you and everybody at home. Uh, yes, it is, uh, we've been lucky. Uh, okay. We've done well this quarter. Uh, but uh, the headwinds are evident and I've seen. Mm -hmm. uh, multiple factors, but one has to be positive and keep pushing under the circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, the reasons are obvious. There is certain crisis in the NBFCs. Uh, there is uh, real estate which is not uh, doing as it out to money is blocked there. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, projects move when there is uh, money into the projects. You can't work with your hands tied behind the back. Mm -hmm. uh, Therefore, you can see the evidence that private sector is still not uh, where it ought to be to spend. Mm. And therefore, much of it is depending on government spend, at least domestic. Mm. Uh, government spend includes some government spends, a uh, certain amount of state government spends, mm. and to uh, large extent public sector units, and so on and so forth. Uh, but much of them are added capacity, whatever. Beyond a point, it will not happen. Mm. Therefore, we need to get the private sector moving, and that's the worry which we keep talking about. Well, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. uh, you can't depend on one sector of the economy because government alone to keep spending. Unless mm -hmm. the private capex flows in, uh, the, the regular okay. spend will not happen. Okay, yeah. can, can I just ask for a little more color on both these verticals, government and uh, private sector? On the government, mm. uh, do you have any worries that because of the fiscal crunch, some orders can get cancelled, uh, both state and centre? And on the private front, haven't the tax cuts uh, already set the conversation uh, going on CapEx? Has anyone approached you or approached uh, the market with bids? See, the, 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 uh, let me first tackle the government uh, question that yeah. you asked. Mm. I think the government has been phenomenally positive in doing uh, such great measures once they realize that there's something not ticking. They, uh, they move quickly into tackle the NPSC crisis, whether it's ILFS, uh, or the other few banks that are going through the crisis right now. Uh, the tax break was probably one of the most phenomenal uh, economic giveaways from a governmental point of view. It's a very bold move, very bold move. But the effect of the tax cut will not be imminent, immediate, right? It takes some time. Uh, so there will be tax savings on all the companies. May not be this particular year because some of the exemptions may have to be given it. But in the future, the 9% savings will accrue to most of the organizations. And that will generate uh, more uh, wealth within the companies for them to carry over future capital expenditure. Uh, the, in my view, the era, the NCLT Act and the, uh, and, and, and the reforms done thereon are all positive. A GSC including, and that will have its positive impact. Uh, some of these takes time. Some of these are sucked away money, but in the future, I think that will come back into the economy. Okay. So we have to have patience there. Oh, okay. What yeah. is worrying for me in the government sectors is that there are many new projects which have been thought about. Mm. You know, you're talking about the, the further development of roads, the river interlinking scheme, the high speed corridor, uh, the mm. the uh, roads in the northeast, so on and so forth. Mm. Much of these projects have been announced, mm. but you need to find funds to implement yes. these projects. They go through the process of land acquisition, right of ways, environmental, so on and so forth. Mm. And all this takes time. So mm. if you don't start it today, and if you're not uh, implementing it today, it takes another two, three years to get it done. Mm. Mm. Uh, that's that's the worry that we have. Where are the future projects? Where are the big future projects going to come from? Okay. On the private sector, the clear clear view is uh, much of the private sector is not spending today. Very little capex going on. Mm. Uh, one of the areas that is going on is the airport expansion, which had to be done because much of the airports had got filled up. Mm. Now, beyond that, I don't see any major private sector investing today for various reasons. 
uh, including profitability and their own economic uh, capacity utilization, so on and so forth. Unless private sector capex really begins, that's going to, uh, the, the 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 second side of the economy will not start ticking. Now, for this, the tax break and many other giveaways by the government is a very big boost. Mm. But these booster shots will come into effect only after a year or a year and a half, mm. and that is where we sort of have a contrary feeling in our mind that. While we are done reasonably well this quarter, mm. whether quarter to quarter, this kind of things can be done because we need to fill in the bucket as the water goes out. Okay. Absolutely, uh, Mr. Subramaniam. Good morning and greetings of the season from my end as well. It's a very important comment you made that the private sector is not spending at all, very little capex at the moment. Is that one of the reasons why you haven't raised your own order inflow guidance? I mean, so far this year your order inflow is up 16 percent, but your guidance for the full year is still 10 to 12 percent. Uh, are you just being conservative, or are things going to get tougher in the second half? Sonia, Sonia, our our size, ten to twelve percent is a big ticket thing to fill up, right? Mm. So I think we have been reasonable in our guidance. We want to stick to it. I think mean, if we achieve that, it's a good feeling. And growing ten to twelve years, ten to twelve percent, and ordering for every year, having twelve to fifteen percent growth in sales every year is a, is, is in my mm. view a very reasonable thing at our size. And I am just praying to God that we are able to continue to do that. So let's keep going on like that. Okay. okay. No, no, that point is taken. But I'm, I'm just, you know, discussing what's, what some of the concerns are that analysts have. Another concern that the street has is some of these orders may come at the cost of margins. Uh, are you facing that kind of uh, dilemma in the market at the moment? No. Let me be very clear about it. There are orders that we have missed because it's not within our range of uh, margin, margin expectations. There are orders that we have missed because we feel uh, that the commercial conditions, the terms put in there on, are not up to us. There are orders that we don't take because the payments are back ended. There are orders that we take because the orders that we don't take because we believe it's not the right place to work. There are a lot of filters within every business, depending on the business that we have within the group. And therefore, rest assured, there is no deliberate action being taken to book orders at the low margin. Nor are we interested in it. We have a healthy backlog. Therein, there is a healthy margin. We'd like to keep it like that. There is no worry in us about those things. Okay. So, working capital is at twenty-three uh, percent of revenues. Uh, in Q4, it was as low as eighteen, nineteen percent. Uh, is this uh, just a sign of the credit crunch? Will it go away, or will this block? Uh, the uh, progress of execution. Uh, there are two things in this letter. Number one is that uh, you know uh, the quarter April to June in March we collect a lot of money because much of the budgets are all tuned to March end, right? So we we have a huge collection drive and we collect much of the money. And once you collect much of the money, there's also reason for us to pay back our vendors, so on and so forth, because the MSMEs and many other vendors that do help us in keeping us where we are also needs to be liquid and they need to be kept healthy and wealthy. Mm. So we do that, and that has happened during this quarter. Mm. Second is that you know some of the most of the government jobs that come today mm. are interest bearing. Mm. Sometimes for oh. strategic and other reasons, we do take these advances with interest. Okay. In this particular case, a major advance which we felt was not needed right now because we had sufficient cash on hand, we gave it back. Oh. So when you match current assets and current liabilities, one of the reasons why the working capital has slightly gone up because we paid our vendors and returned back some of the money back as we didn't want that once in a while. Second, it's a fact that in some places outstandings are not dues are not getting cleared as as fast as it ought to be as per the payment terms, and therefore there is a slight build up of outstanding dues. Including retentions, we completed the project, but for some A, B, C, D reasons, the retention money is still not being uh, got mm. back. And this is built up the working capital bill. We are very conscious about it. We will drive ourselves to get it back to where it ought to be. Okay, uh, because you spoke about the stress in the NBFC sector, I have to ask you this: Is there any additional equity investment or commitment that you would have to make for L and T Finance? I mean, because of the problems that we've seen in the sector as a whole. Uh, L&T Finance is doing well. Let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. the, the company is about 60% consumer and about 40% wholesale. Mm -hmm. uh, wholesale includes real estate and uh, and some infrastructure loans that we give it. In some of these projects, the clients have been gone through with proper due diligence and such. But looking into the market today and the conditions there on in the real estate, there is there is a problem because enough sales is not taking place. Mm -hmm. So some of these loans are. They're on, but the sales are not taking place in the projects in which loans are being given. 
So what I say, so there is caution on these matters. Mm. But the consumer side is doing well. Overall, things are okay. But the real estate and the infrastructure side, we have to exercise caution how to sort it out. Mm. As we see it, and as we drawn out the cash flow and such other uh, parameters for the organization, we don't see there's any any reason to uh, infuse any further equity or money into that company right now. It is healthy from that point of view. Let me assure you that. Okay, uh, sir. Uh, the government is uh, going to release, or the MCA is going to release a list of companies that are not paying. Uh, the 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 MSMEs on time. Uh, I think you'll have a 45-day rule, and uh, they're going to make it public and pressure private companies to pay up. Uh, you think this is a move that is first of all feasible? Will it ease the credit crunch? Overall thoughts? Um, there are many ways to look at it. Uh, the, the, there is a feeling that MSMEs are struggling, so I think the government has to step in and act in the manner that it deems fit. It has to act. The fact is, some of these MSMEs also at their times come to us and sign back-to-back -back agreements or agreements that are befitting from their point of view. Now, from our point of view, we enforce that agreement properly in the sense that if they had to be paid at time, we paid. If there is a back-to-back -back agreement, as and when the client pays, we pay them. Now, but this is idealistic. Sometimes these companies do sign such agreements for whatever reasons, but at times, we don't get the money from the clients for many reasons, and we cannot be absolutely tough that we will not pay them. An MSME may feel aggrieved in the situation, though they have an agreement with an organization like ours. Okay. So in this case, some jurors, some kind of broader uh, you know, thought process has to prevail to see how to assist or take this forward. We do it judiciously, but at times it is not possible for various reasons and such. That is one. Second, mm -hmm. today, due to complaints and governance reasons. Mm. There are a lot of paperwork that many of these MSMEs have to do which they were not doing earlier. Filing of proper GST returns, uh, mm. the, the ITC credits, the filing of other documents and such, which it's not being enforced so seriously earlier. Mm. But now with the entire GST on, on the IT systems and on proper records, so we have, don't have the proper uh, uh, paperwork back to back absolutely clear mm. and you pay them and tomorrow we are not able to enforce these uh, disciplinary action of proper filing of returns and such, we also get into trouble from the tax authorities is why we are not insured this. Mm. And therefore these governance factors are taking a precedence right now because that is a that is the way the system is working and is a good way to work because it's mm. very good to have a clean uh, clean sheeting and and, and, and mm. clean records. Okay. And these matters one has to understand and one has to embrace into the culture now that it is governance matters and not anything matters. Mm. And what's governance matters, let us get into the proper shape of governance. Mm. And this sort of irritates people, but one has to go through with it, okay. and so does MSMEs. Okay, so actually, I must ask you this question. This is a, a Network 18 news break, and it is not yet confirmed by the government that the government may divest its stake in BHEL up to 26%. Would you be an interested buyer? That's a pretty leading question. <laughs> uh, I give you a slightly long answer for this. We have nearly 26, 28,000 megawatts of power capacity uh, for produce, for making power plants in the country. Uh, BHL is a big brother. It's got 22,000 megawatts. LNT has got 4,000 odd megawatts. And there are there are companies like Toshiba, uh, G, and others who've got smaller capacity. This is both boiler fabric boiler making as well as turbine fabrication. Now. 28,000 megawatts of capacity and the number of power plants being ordered in the country in a year is hardly, let us say, 2,400 or at best 3,000 megawatts. So much of the capacity is idle today, the, the existing uh, fabrication or manufacturing capability. Now, BHL is a, it's a fantastic organization, one of the oldest public sectors, uh, uh, Navratnas, as one calls it. Uh, very good engineering capability, huge uh, factories in uh, various parts of the country. Uh, BHL is also diversified into many other uh, parts of the economy. They are, make, they are into locomotives, they are into uh, defense and few other aspects. 26% uh, by the government is, uh, for me, uh, working with the government, where sometimes the decision making is not at the board level, but behind the board level. I would like to think about it if it is 100%, but there is no way to suggest that we are keen on it or we are looking at it right now. Okay. Uh, we will have to evaluate it. We will we do evaluate okay. all these aspects. 
we already have existing capacity which is not fully utilized mm-hmm. and therefore from my point of view it's it's a, it's 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 good for the government to do it but the reality would be interested is something we need to think about and i, I don't think with our present capacity being what it is we'd be too keen on that okay well even if you are when you are or if you are interested we hope you're the first ones to hear about that mr subramaniam just one last question before we let you go you started by saying that private capex has not picked up what's the one reason why uh, there is still a, a you know a dearth of money from the private space and what would you like to hear from the government next i mean a lot has been done already but is is there a requirement for land reforms labor reforms i mean what do you think the need of the hour is I think we have to keep the sentiment positive, and that's what the government is attempting to do, and they're doing a good job about it. Um, once the sentiments are positive, money will start flowing, and people will start investing. Uh, the sentiment is a bit down for the reasons of many that we know today, uh, but I think it will come back. Uh, uh, we are given positive results. I'm sure many others will also try to do that. And once the sentiments are positive, things will come back to where it ought to be. Well, you've certainly done your bit, Mr. Subramaniam. Thank you very much, and may the year be as glorious and more glorious for you. And yeah, pleasure to be on your channel, uh, Lata Sonia Anuj, and good luck and all the very best. It's fantastic Diwali to all of you, your viewers, and your families. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, we have to take a quick break. Haven't done that, and then technical tips.